So today we're looking at the process of assessing eye movements. We're going to look at four different um, uh, eye movements. We're going to look at extraocular movements or range of motion for the eyes. Well, then we're going to look at tracking. We're going to look at uh, grossly assessing cades. And then we're going to look at assessing near point of convergence. So the first part of assessing eye movements is looking at extraocular movements or EOMs, the docs will uh, abbreviate that, and this is basically looking at the range of motion for the eyes. So the goal here is to make sure that both eyes reach the full extent of their range in all uh, nine planes around the, uh, the eyes there. So we're going to take a look at this, um, how it's done, and what we we're looking for for the eyes. So tracking is the ability of the eyes to follow a moving target as it moves within the visual field. Um, as we do this, we're going to be making a much smaller circle as we're looking at tracking. We're also going to be looking for certain aspects of this movement. We're going to look at the movement and describe it as smooth or was the movement jerky. We're going to talk about the number of fixation losses we saw during the assessment of this movement. And we're also going to talk about um, the amount of head and body movement we saw during this movement. So let's take a look at tracking. The next movement we're going to grossly assess is called saccades. With uh, saccades are very fast, short movements. These are the movements that we use when we read, so functionally they're very important. So um, with saccades, once again, we're going to be looking for um, how accurate that movement is, and what we want to see is one nice quick hop from one target to the next. But what we may see is an undershoot, where it takes two hops to get to the other target. We may see an overshoot where it goes past the other target and comes back. We may also see where it looks like one eye is sort of chasing the other eye as we're looking at the saccades as well. So we're going to talk about that as we describe the movements that we observe. We're also going to talk about how much head and body movement we saw during the assessment of our saccades. So let's take a look at our saccades. So the next movement we're going to assess is called near point of convergence. Near point of convergence is an important part of near vision focusing. Um, it, that allows us to see up close. Um, what we're going to be doing is starting with our target a little bit further away than we have been. We've been working at about 40 centimeters with the other um, uh, test. This one we're going to start a little further away. We're going to bring that target in and the patient's uh, instructions are 
um, follow this in and tell me if you see two. We're going to be observing their eyes, and what we want to see is on all five trials, those eyes moving in towards the nose and staying there nice and strong. Um, a normal near point of convergence is within six centimeters of the tip of the nose. Um, if it's any further than that out, then um, this is going to be a weak near vision system. So let's take a look at how we assess near point of convergence.